My name is Brent Stabener with Logan Consulting. This video today, we will discuss and review the sales order process in Business Central. So we will start with a sales quote and go all the way through the invoicing step. During that time, I will be demoing the different um, versions of warehousing that you can have, uh, no warehousing, basic warehousing, and advanced warehousing. So for this video today, I'm gonna start with a sales quote and bring that all the way to an invoice. There is no requirement in Business Central to start with a sales quote. You can start at an order or an invoice. But I will start at a quote today just to show the data flow all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sales quote here. And I'm going to enter in our customer here. And once we put our customer in here, all of the setup information from that customer should come through. Address information, ship to address, payment terms. Etc. And down here um, in the items, I'm going to go ahead and select a locked controlled item that I had. Here's our lot tracked generic item. And I'm going to start with the location code here being our no warehousing, so turned off. And then from there, I will uh, show the other la layers as well. So we're going to go ahead and enter a quantity of 10. Unit price, 750. So I have our sales order, sales quote right here, ready to go. From here, you can go ahead and release that quote to indicate that it's finalized. And then uh, if you wanted to, you could email that quote to a, to your customer. Let's say that customer receives that quote. They approve it, so now we can go ahead and make it an order. You can actually go straight to invoice, but today I'm going to go to an order first. So yes, I'm going to convert the quote to an order. Doing this will archive the quote and creates a new order that I will click yes to open. Now that I have our sales order here opened, Uh, all of the same information from the quote should have come through, uh, including the actual quote number. So the quote here will be tied to the sales order. And uh, I won't make any changes to the quote uh, to the order here. So uh, to, so now we'll move on to the shipping step. So let's say we emailed this out <clears throat> to our customer, our customer emailed the order confirmation, uh, and we've gone ahead and purchased this item. We have it in stock, and now we're ready to fulfill the order and ship it. If you have warehousing turned off, which is this location code here, uh, this is best for smaller organizations. They don't really have a warehouse. Uh, they have a smaller staff. You know, the same people who order enters orders also creates the shipments. Um, if that was the case, then uh, everything would still be managed right here in the sales order screen. You could scroll over and, and select your quantity to ship. Um, I have it defaulting to the total of the order. But uh, if you are partially shipping, you would update that quantity to ship right here. Uh, I'm going to leave it alone. And all you would have to do is go to posting and post. You would select the shipment and the ship and you would be all set. So managing it all in the sales order is very easy. But let's say you do have a warehouse that has a staff. And uh, when that happens, typically you your warehouse uh, employees and managers you would want them to stay out of the sales order. So if that was the case, you might want to turn on either basic or advanced warehousing. So I will start with basic here. And think of basic warehousing as a one-step uh, warehouse transaction process. So from the sales order, I'm going to create one transaction, and that transaction will manage the shipment. So if I go to process here, and we're, since we're on basic, we're going to create an inventory put away slash pick. So uh, I'm going to turn this off and create a pick here. I'm going to also print the picking document and click OK. Now I have the picking list here that I will go ahead and print to a PDF here. So this is the pick ticket that the warehouse employee would take. And it would direct them where exactly that item is located. Uh, if you were using, you know, shelves or uh, bins and shelves, that would show up here. Uh, I'm not, so um, all it's just telling me is the location code right here. 
And then there's a place for them to fill in the quantity that they actually picked here. And they could turn that into their supervisor who could then manage the inventory pick. So we have our one inventory pick activity created. Uh, I can actually get to that pick, uh, that put away document right from the order. If I go to warehouse and then inventory put away slash pick lines. And here is that pick document. Uh, but um, what's more likely is that you have someone managing a whole list of inventory picks. So instead of going to the order first, you can just go to your inventory pick screen and that will have all picks that have been created uh, for sales orders. So this one down here is the one that I just created. And now you have an inventory pick document that would indicate someone to go and actually pick those items. Uh, the quantity to handle, that's how many you're actually going to pick. Uh, and that is stayed at zero by default at first because it requires someone to actually enter in that quantity uh, to confirm that it matches the 10 that's on this order. Uh, because we are using a lot tracked item, we have to actually select which lot that we're going to pick this from. So I'm going to choose this 444 lot because it has 100 quantity. And then I'm going to go ahead and autofill the quantity to handle. You could also type it in here um, and it will show 10. And then everything is still managed in here. You go ahead and post the shipments and that will actually take the inventory out of uh, the item out of your inventory. So that is with basic warehousing turned on. But let's, uh, what you might see uh, with advanced warehousing, you might have need a more granular approach to your warehouse documents. If, you know, maybe the same people that manage, the people that manage the shipments, you know, going out from the dock to the, whatever truck might come pick it up. Uh, those aren't the, maybe those aren't the people that are actually picking uh, items. Maybe you have specific pickers that go ahead and do that for you. Well, in that case, you would want a, an advanced warehousing turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that same sales order that we just created. And, and think of advanced warehousing like a two-step uh, process. So instead of having everything in that inventory pick document, what we're going to do is create a warehouse, a warehouse shipment document um, and from that, we are going to create a warehouse pick. So I'm going to update my location here to advanced. Confirm that I still have a price here. There's my price. Okay, so, yep, we've got our $7,500. So, um, again, we can release this document because it's been finalized by the customer. We've gone ahead and purchased the items. We're ready to fulfill the order. So instead of creating a inventory put away slash pick, we're gonna create a warehouse shipment. So now it tells us one warehouse shipment has been created. Now, from here, um, we have the ability to create a pick. So now that we have our warehouse shipment document, you may have a shipping manager managing these, creating the documents. Then someone can, then that person can go ahead and create a pick. They could even assign it to a specific warehouse employee. I'll go ahead and print the document. And now we get our picking list that you could hand to your picker there going to be the same as the inventory pick one. And now it tells us the, so here's our picking list. And now, um, very same exact document. And now we have uh, a warehouse pick document created. So now if we go to warehouse picks, here is our pick document. And this is where the, your pickers in the warehouse would, would, this is the document and the screen that they would work from. Uh, we're gonna open this. And one thing we have to do is select a lot because this is a lot tracked number or lot tracked item. So um, here's our lot number list I'm going to select. 
and our 10 is filled in because our our shipping manager confirmed we have 10 on hand and entered that we're going to pick 10. Uh, so after we pick our lot, we just go ahead and register the pick, which means now this those 10 items in that lot are assigned to this warehouse shipment. So our warehouse pick document disappears because it's been registered. And now we have our warehouse shipment. And you can see the document status has updated to completely picked, indicating that the pick has been registered for all items. Um, and now we have our quantity to ship as 10 here. We can go ahead and post that shipment and click OK. Once that shipment is posted, whether you're using basic or advanced warehousing, the quantity shipped now will show up on the sales order. And if we scroll down here, Scroll over to the right. We will see that our quantity to ship has moved to quantity shipped, and that 10 here is actually a hyperlink, and I can click on that, and it will take me right to the warehouse documents related to that 10, uh, the quantity of 10 that was shipped. So here's our sales shipment line, and that is tied to those that warehouse shipment we created. So when it comes to shipping, those are the, the different ways we can manage uh, fulfilling sales orders. Uh, once the sales order is fulfilled, uh, we're ready to invoice it. Uh, we can come into the sales order and go ahead and post that. Um, we can go ahead and just post the invoice document right from the sales order. Uh, but maybe um, what you do is uh, maybe you invoice your customers once a week, or maybe if a customer has you know multiple orders, you'll go ahead and invoice them together. So you don't have to invoice one by one. Uh, these two orders that we just invoiced, we can actually uh, that we just shipped, we can in, uh, put on one invoice. Uh, so um, I can go to the sales invoice screen here, create a new invoice. And just like a sales order, you would fill in your customer number here and all the same setup information from the customer would come through. And then once the, that information loads, I would come down here to the lines and tell it I want to get my shipment lines right here. And all the shipments that haven't been invoiced yet for this customer will show up in a new screen. And these last two, I'm gonna go ahead and select. These are the two that I just did. And now I have an invoice for both shipments that you see here. Both have the same quantity and you see different location codes there. And now I have an invoice for both shipments. And from here, I could go ahead and you know send out, uh, I could go ahead and post and send the invoice so I could email that invoice to the customer and post the invoice, which would then close out uh, the sales orders. So this video today, we showed you how to walk through a uh, sales quote all the way to invoicing your customer uh, with, uh, with showing how the different levels of warehousing works.